Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, this is Casey Ajindu, and I would like to go ahead and help you guys understand the multifamily investing. If you guys were here last week or my last video, you would understand that I we spoke about multifamily investing in introduction, and I talked to you guys about how you can leverage your capital and your time to be able to get enough capital that you can use to purchase your first multifamily investing. Folks, the different ways that you can raise capital, and we're going to talk a little bit about that over the weeks, coming weeks. But what's important is you need to know what the capital stack looks like. This is something that is extremely important for any multifamily investor to know. Understanding the capital stack. <clears throat> when you understand the capital stack, it becomes an easier process. You now know how to leverage this capital stack for your business, and you're able to use this capital stack when you are trying to raise money. Without the capital stack, it's practically impossible to be able to raise money because no one is going to want to give you any money unless they know that their money is safe. So this is what the capital stack looks like. I know this might not be very clear to some of us if you're looking at this video. So I apologize for this. I try to zoom in as much as possible, and this is the best I got. The capital stack works from down upwards. It doesn't work the reverse. It never starts on the top. It works from below upwards. So in this case... It's basically the lowest amount of risk is at the bottom and the highest amount of risk is at the top. But the way it also works is the people who get the best returns are usually at the top, which have the common equity, and those who get the lowest returns are at the bottom, which is the senior debt. So let's talk about the capital stack. What is the capital stack? According to Webster, the capital stack refers to the layers of capital that goes into purchasing and operating a commercial real estate investment. So what does that mean? That means if you have an apartment that you want to purchase, you have to make sure that you have enough money to purchase this apartment. Folks, a million dollars is a lot of money. I would say a lot of people don't have a million dollars just sitting around in their bank waiting to deploy that capital. So they have to find a way to be creative to make sure the money is enough when it comes time to purchase the cap this property. That's why we're going to look at what this entire capital stack looks like and help you guys get a clear understanding how to leverage this investment strategy. Okay, so there are four main items that are, every investor needs to learn about the capital stack. And we're gonna talk about those four things. And I showed you guys that in the, in the picture on the last slide. And now let's go ahead and go into this in a little bit more detail. First is senior debt. Senior debt is defined as the debt that takes priority over every other unsecured debt on this prop in the property. It's usually priority over a more junior debt owed by the issuer. Senior debt generates or has greater security in this capital structure than any subordinate debt. What this means is when you go into any investor and you say, I want, let's use real world example. You go into an investor, you say, I have a property I want to purchase for a million dollars. I only have $10,000. The investor is going to say, okay, that's fine. So you, how much money do you need for a down payment? The investor is going to ask, and you will tell the investor, well, I have, the, the bank says that I need to have $300,000 for a down payment. So technically I need $290,000. So the investor, in order for them to feel comfortable to give you that $290,000, they have to make sure that there is a bank that has already said yes to loaning you $700,000 to cover that debt in the case of a 70-30 loan. So an investor would feel comfortable giving you $290,000 because there is already a bank out there that's already agreed to give you $700,000. So a lot of people do it backwards. A lot of people think, well, I need to come up with all this money. I need to have $300,000 in the bank before I go to the bank to request for money. But what you need to do is you need to go to the bank first. Make sure the bank is comfortable lending you that money if it's 65, 60%, 70% of what you need. And then you can take that instrument, that document is called a letter of intent or a letter of intent to lend. You can take that letter of intent, a letter of intent to lend, and then you can go to investors and say, hey, listen, folks, I have this property. I'm interested in purchasing this property. This is what the return of your money is going to look like. This is how much money I need. So folks, you have to take this into consideration and make this a priority. Make sure you get your senior debt first in line before you even worry about going anywhere else. Now, folks, there's also some people that say, well, you know what? 
I'm not able to have anybody else out there. I don't know any members of my, I don't have any family members that have money. I'm the only, I'm the only child. I'm an orphan. I mean, you name it, just all kinds of things that happen. So what if you know no one? And what if there's no investors that you have the ability to meet? Well, there's another way to go ahead and make sure that you can still purchase the small fat family and use other people's money. This is how things work, guys. This is how the Grand Cardones and the other people of this world were able to make so much money. This is called mezzanine debt. So what is mezzanine debt? Mezzanine debt is defined as any subordinate debt, or in some cases, preferred equity, an instrument that represents a claim on a company's assets, which is senior only to that of common shares. So mezzanine financing can be structured as either debt of preferred stock. In most cases, I know this sounds like an extremely confusing thing. Let me make it easy for you to understand. If you go to the bank and you need, and you have a, getting a property for a million dollars, the bank tells you that they're only able to give you 700,000, you have to come up with 300,000. You have the ability to go around and shop for mezzanine lenders or lenders that only do second liens. Those lenders will look at the overall structure of the deal. If they love the deal, they feel comfortable, they wanna do the deal. What those lenders would do is they will use mezzanine financing, also known as a second mortgage, which is not senior debt, but this is now subordinate to the senior debt or second to the senior debt. So the senior debt always takes priority, is always the first thing on the loan. When the mezzanine lender sees that there is a, a lender willing to give you 700,000, well, that mezzanine lender might feel comfortable giving you the remaining 290,000 or $300,000 that is required for you to now purchase this property. Folks, mezzanine financing is very risky, but there are mezzanine lenders out there. They do have exuberant rates, so their rates are a little high. But if you know how to structure this, you know how to work this out properly, you can use senior debt and mezzanine debt and purchase a property at 100% financing. Again, folks, my job is to be here for you guys. You can feel free to reach out to me. My email is available on YouTube. Anyone who has questions about this stuff, this is what I love to do. So I don't mind helping out. I don't mind giving you guys some time. Of course, there is some kind of expectations on both sides, right? Because my time is also very valuable. So we can always discuss that. But again, this is what's important to know is when you are looking at ensuring that you can leverage yourself and your position in any real estate transaction, understanding the capital structure of it gives you a lot of leverage. So in this case, getting your senior debt in place helps you go into any situation and also has the ability to have people that can help you make up the difference. The next thing that people don't know about that people can also use is something that I call preferred equity. Now, preferred equity works just like mezzanine debt, but this is why I like preferred equity better, right? Is mezzanine debt is usually a lien against your property, while preferred equity is never a lien against the property. So what guess what this means is if you were to go into refinancing the debt, you have the ability to only refinance the actual lien on the property as long as your preferred equity position holders feel comfortable with you using that strategy. This process works extremely well. Preferred equity is a new thing in the market. People use that because a lot of people feel uncomfortable with the mezzanine debt. The rates of mezzanine debt was a little, were a little high. A lot of lenders stay getting away from the mezzanine debt. So now you have people or individuals, private lenders, with capital and they say, I don't want to manage a property. I don't want to do any of the work. I don't want to go get a loan. I don't want to look for a property. I just have a lot of money and I want to put this money into a property. I know a lot of people that are like that. And those people, they're very comfortable taking a preferred equity position in your multifamily project. And by them doing this, what this means is they get a good return based on what the project is uh, projected to perform like. So again, a lot of people like the strategy. It's kind of what companies like Fundrise or companies like, you know, this real estate investment trust companies have been able to use by taking preferred equity position in deals and they can now pay their, uh, their investors a pretty good return when this money comes back into their pocket. So folks, this is a process that you can leverage. And then the last and the most important process that everyone likes is what's called common equity. So common equity on a capital stack is best to finance the money for the down payment, closing costs, any money that's used to repair, you know, repair the property. 
The investors, principal, are usually principals or are family members or friends. They'll, they work from a general partnership or a limited partnership position, and this puts them in a position to be able to expect a return. Folks, I have a course that I have available online, and that course goes into a lot more detail about this stuff. And if you don't, if you're not the kind of person that likes to take real estate courses and you want to work one on one with someone, I'm also available to help you guys with this process and to teach you guys what you need to know and to help you guys walk through the process to eventually find the multifamily project and close on the multifamily project. I can help you from both the lending side and I can help you from both the consulting side. So again, this is a way that you guys can use to leverage your resources purchase a multifamily, put a little bit of money into this multifamily project and make a whole lot of money back in return. This is something you can always use. It's completely up to you if you want to take advantage of it. I was able to take advantage of it and it worked great wonders for me. And I hope you can do the same. Again, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And please reach out to me if you have any questions. See you guys in the next video. Peace.